Um, hi, I'm Bert, and I'm also known as Piscasaurus. Uh, what I want to talk about actually is, um, uh, usually what I would, would do is, is talk about LibUV, because that was my, my major thing I worked on in the past a couple of years. Uh, LibUV actually got some rad changes, like you know we made er error handling better, and uh, like we returned an error code instead of just minus one, for example. And uh, what else we d did we do? Oh, we did do something groundbreaking, which is now C time. If you stat a file, C time means the same on every platform. Like this is unique. This has not been done in 30 years. If you're like, what? What's this all about? Fine. I mean, it's very specific. I'm gonna talk about something maybe more. Um, abstract today and, and something that maybe concerns a little bit more people. Um, so, uh, first of all, this talk has two parts. Like, the first part is actually quite, quite abstract, but please try to follow me along because it sort of explains where I come from, and then the second part is, is more, it's, it's easier to understand. So, um, TJ, he was complaining in his opening talk that I didn't do exact sync. Instead, what I did when I should have done exec sync is like read websites. I don't know, Hacker News. You, you guys do it all the time as well. Um, and a note mailing list, also a, a, a great time sync. And, and then there's like a Dutch website called nu.nl. It's news. Um, you can spend an entire day there and procrastinate everything that's really important. And so what, what, what was really noticeable last summer is it was well, last summer, this, that's like very northern uh, hemisphere centric, of course. Sorry, Australians, uh, you are left, in, left out here. Um, but um, uh, it seemed to be the node summer of bike shedding, right? Like people would uh, like m make posts like this, future of asynchronous programming in Node, because obviously this was the right time to turn it all upside down. And um, also this one, future of node streams, we need to talk. And then I think M Miguel de Icaza, he's quite known he, for, for building Mono. He, he did this post, and I, I actually thought this was good. Um, callbacks as our, as our generation's go-to statement. Uh, it's weird that he put a space between go and to, but um, details. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but like what it really did is get me thinking about Node 2. And the other reason is, of course, that Isaac really got upset with all this, and he said, there will be no Node 2. Like, Node 1 is done, and it's released January 1st. No, I mean, I, I like my job. I, I, I'd rather not have it done January 1st, right? <laughs> so um, let's go think about Node 2 a little bit. Now, um, next slide, yeah. But here is a, a couple of uh, common causes of, of bugs in Node applications. Um, I, I witnessed this over and over again. It was very painful when I was working at Cloud9. Um, but like where people, like actually smart people, were, were trying to build a very complex and big uh, a node application. And, and you know, fixing bugs, bugs in Cloud9 was like whack-a-mole. You would like fix one place where you didn't handle an error correctly, and then another one would pop up because you, it would basically you would run write one more step and then you would run into another issue that had the same problem or another place where you did the same thing wrong. And, and there's, a, there's a couple of these, like uh, double and missed callbacks. Um, and people uh, do ad hoc ironing out of like flow control problems. I never wrote an implementation of a semaphore, for example, before I started to do Node. And now I, you have to do it all the time because you want to wait for two things and then call one callback when both is done, but you don't know in which order they're going to be completed, so you have to count how much many callbacks you get, for example. Uh, not handling errors, um, Reynos uh, talked about that. Uh, I'm going to um, talk about it way more and, well, maybe more vague, maybe. Uh, you have to, nec you, to use next stick. I mean, next stick is really, like, it's annoying, right? Now you, you're supposed to not call a callback synchronously because you read Isaac's blog post a long time ago. And, and he says you shouldn't do it, so I mean, you, you listen to the, the, to the big leader. Um, and now you have to put next stick everywhere. It's, it's very, it, why, what's, what's the point of that? So, um, oh, I didn't want to go there. So like, for an example, this is what people do, implement a sem semaphore on their own. And, oh, this one is interesting. So try to do curl in Node. And uh, we have pipe, right? It should be easy with pipe. Um, I, I, I had to do this actually for uh, to when I was teaching um, a, a, another 
girl, a well, woman at Cloud9, uh, how, to, how to do it in Node, and she, it, she, she had a PhD in computer science. I'm not lying, but she didn't know JavaScript or Node. And then it turns out you can, it's easy to download a file or to curl a file with Node, but then if it goes wrong and you don't want to crash, you have a problem. You have to do all this crap like, oh, wait, the file fails somehow, then I'm going to destroy the socket, and if the socket has an error, destroy the file, and if both fail, then, well, you don't want to, you know, call the final callback twice and all that terrible shit. Um, I, this is a problem for us. So, um, and now, yeah, and, and so back to this statement. I actually agree with it, and I don't want to do the Hacker News discussion uh, over again, uh, and probably nobody agrees with anyone. Um, but the, the, the thing is, with callbacks, uh, they're similar in a way that they express really what is happening in your, well, it, to a certain level of abstraction, but what's happening in your VM. Um, a go-to statement is basically just a jump. Your processor continues run code somewhere else. A callback is basically, ah, we had, a, we had some code that we wanted to run uh, at some point in response to something, and then we're going to do it, or maybe not into response to something, do it. Uh, it yeah, it, it's, it, but it doesn't encapsulate any intent. It doesn't um, encapsulate, like, it doesn't tell Node anything about why you are using a callback there. Um, in Node, of course, we also have event emitters. Uh, they do encapsulate maybe some intent, but like, here's something for you to chew on while I, bab while I babble on, like, what? Does it mean, sort of, what is the meaning of an event emitter? If you say, well, a for loop is like you take a number of steps. A while loop is you do something as long as a certain condition is true. What does it mean to have an event emitter? Anyway, so the, uh, this was the abstract part. I want to add something to Node. And um, it looks like this. Oh, oh wait. Let's skip. Let's do, let's do the design criteria first. I want to add something to Node. And it should be a construct for working with callbacks. And it should capture more intent. And it should make it, e it, should make it easier to handle errors. And it should make it easier to, uh, you should not have to worry about next ticking stuff. Um, and it should help you to build robust applications that don't crash all the time. And of course, we had, we've had um, like promises and stuff. And, and there's been endless debates about it. Um, and, but one of the problems is, well, they were actually ripped out of Node because they were bike shedding territory. People could never agree on how they worked uh, or how they should work, and everybody had their own, like, you know, wanted their own sugar pill added to the mix. And so eventually the decision was made, just rip it out and go back to the go-to statement of our generation. Um, but we, now we have to find something again. Um, and of course, because Node, I mean, we've seen how many we might be growing with 100% a year, but we already have a, a shitload of modules, and we don't want to break them all, and we don't want to break your app, or um, I'm saying we, but I don't want to break your app, um, and the other core team members don't want this to happen at all so far. Um, so, but I do want to have it in core, or to some extent in core. We, I, it's not possible in, in user land in a reasonable way, and I think a construct like this is in a, in an in a platform that is uh, asynchronous by nature, you need a high-level construct for working with callbacks. Um, so this is sort of the, the general idea I would, uh, I would want to have. It's, it's very obvious that was the, the intent. You, you, it would be like a, an asynchronous try-catch block. So um, you could do s stuff in the try phase, and you could have callbacks there, whatever. And, but only if all the callbacks were, all the, all the asynchronous operations were completed, and all the um, you know, all the event emitters were gone, for example, we would eventually call your finally handler, and it actually looks very much like a normal callback right now, so it has error first and maybe results as later arguments, and, um, that, and, and that would run afterwards, and it would express intent, like you were trying to do a couple of things and then gather, do something with the result, deal with the result. Of course, we cannot change the language, so this wouldn't work, but we can do this. Um, have, a, have a function, and you pass it, to, pass it a closure. It, it generates basically a, a task object. I'm calling it task because it's, I realized later that's actually very similar to what you have in C Sharp uh, as a task object. 
And then when you have that object, you can say set callback, for example, and, and pass the callback. That's how you could do a, f a, a finally block. You could do like, like promises do, like dot then, and only get it called when the, when the operation succeeds. And the nice thing, thing about this, and that's much better than promises, is that you can actually compose them. Because if you create a task within a task, it just becomes part of the outer try-catch block. Um, and if you also would do a set timeout, then both would have to complete before um, your callback gets called. And, well, as you can see, um, yeah, you get the error first. So if anything goes wrong in that box, we will pass you the error. And we will guarantee that your callback always gets called once, exactly once, never more, never less. So, like, think about a very nice API in Node. Well, nice, I mean, people say you need streams, but really, like, nothing is simpler than doing fs.read file with a callback. You pass it a file, and you, you know what's going to happen. Your callback is going to get called in the end. And if it didn't work, it's still going to get called. Now, if you look at actually how fs.read files implemented in core, you'll see the problem that you deal with on a daily basis, which is, well, you w read file is actually implemented as pr with primitives, with more primitive operations. And now we have to do stuff like, well, if a read operation failed, then we must not forget to close the file descriptor, and after that, call the user's callback. And of course, if, fail if we fail to close, then well, then what? We probably want to pass the first error to the user and not the second one. All the stuff that's really like, we wouldn't want to think about it, and you, would, you should definitely not have to do that. So if you, you could actually implement this function with task uh, in, a, in a quite trivial way. Um, well, let me see if I have my, if I have my mouse here. So um, basically, the, the trick would be you, you, wrap it in an, uh, you wrap it in a block that says, like, create a task, and pass the and, and pass the callback that the user specified to set callback. You could do that, and then in here do error handling the way um, Jake told you not to do it. Just throw whatever, and Node would figure out what to do with it because it's all wrapped in a task container. So um, this almost sounds too good to be true, and um, but we have one problem. So the problem is the event emitter. I use this image, by the way. I, I did a talk last year at LXJS, and it was recorded and put on YouTube and actually got like way more views than we expected. And then we realized, or I didn't, actually um, someone from LXJS did, the, like the blur picture, like the, the screenshot that you show in, show, see in the list was this picture. I think many people just watched my talk or at least clicked on it because there was some dude doing something extremely gross. <laughs> well, I mean... For the, it's for a good cause, right? Um, so, um, well, in, in this case, you could make, if you created a task within there, well, in the task, an event emitter, and add, an, add a, like a listener there, it would be all fine. It would work as you would expect. The problem is, if you create a task and you start interacting with an event emitter, that was already there. I and mean, you do that a lot in Node. Well, for example, you use process.on something, you know, process.on message if you use cluster. Or you would use, a, uh, if, if you did something more fancy, like a, a, a database connection pool, you would have a, a set of connections. And then you would, as you would start to query, you would pick one of these connections and start interacting with it. So we have a problem here. Um, so what we're going to do, or what I would want to do, is all the event emitters that Node has internally, we're going to replace that by something called a resource which is very similar to an event emitter, but with sm slight modifications. Um, so uh, it, it works like this. If you add an event listener to a resource, um, you become vulnerable. That means if the resource goes down, you, so your task will fail, and you, the, the, the error will be handled, it will be sent to your callback, etc. cetera. Um, you can have an error handler in there. So um, that would, would look like this. You're interacting with a connection that's not created as part of your task. And, well, you can have an error handler that could do anything. If you wouldn't specify it, you would actually get this. Like, the default behavior would be to throw inside of your task. Very simple. There's some more rules. They're not really that interesting. We, uh, we can discuss that offline or something. Listeners are sort of have sort of an end, um, and that is when the resource is also ended or closed. You cannot call e .emit 
on something, like something implicitly generates ima events, you cannot do like, you know, process dot standard in dot emit key press. There's modules that do that. Bad idea. Like, I mean, you can use them, but um, don't write them, please. Um, and then finally, there's sort of a treat. And the treat is this. I, I, it's very hard to see. I wonder if I can make this a little brighter. So, w well, this, this is actually more, more or less a Gantt chart. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's better. This is more or less a Gantt chart. I'm not very good at charting either. Like, suppose this is the first tick of your program. And then where do we do a set timeout, and eventually we'll get a callback there. And at the same time, when your program starts, we start listening on the socket, and eventually we will accept the connection. And well, when you accept the connection, that's what happens under the hood. We will start accept another connection, and when the, the, it actually comes in, um, we will get a callback. And so, like think of think of your node program walking uh, or or running like this. Or for example, here we do a read. It takes a while, but then eventually the data comes in. And then as a response to the read, we do a write, and we call also shutdown, which is like the, the equivalent of stream.end, but like more low level. And I mean, this if, if you could look at your node program like this, it would be obvious, like how it, obvious how it worked. Um, the only problem is node doesn't track all this, and it, it can't because this at, at some point becomes inf infinitely big. If you run it for a day, it will be so big you're, you would overflow your memory. So what node actually sees now, for example, if an error would happen, in a response to this read, it would fail in the callback. What would it know? Well, what it would know is, well, we were just starting a write, and there's some read pending there, and there's a set time right pending there. Like, it cannot look into the future, and it cannot look into the past. So that's a problem, because that's why stack traces are really useless in Node. Um, but if we do tasks, at least we can do a little bit better. So like this, it slides, but in fact, it's the same image. It's just there's like a sort of a box, an overlaid box. And this could, for example, be a task that you wrapped around, well, accepting stuff and then writing, uh, reading the, the, the request and then writing the response. If you wrap a task around it, Node suddenly knows that, hey, you were handling a connection. You could give it a name, for example. Hey, you were handling a connection. And now, even nicer, suppose that like the reading part was wrapped in another task because you can wrap a nest task. Now what we get is sort of a nice stack trace basically where we say well we were reading and it was part of well the, like a big plan of reading stuff from a socket which was part of a big plan of handling a client connection and we can actually name stuff because if you look at the task api what we could simply do is give these functions a name and then well you know if it has a, the, the function.name property we could look at that and print it out so a stack trace what it would look like is more like this and it's still not super useful, but it's, it's a lot better in my opinion, especially when you use external libraries, where we could say, well, error, it was part of um, uh, like the inner task or like the handle client blah task, which was part of, well, an, a bigger plan and uh, underneath that could be another bigger plan. And so uh, you the stack trace would not really tell you the complete history of a callback, but it would tell you what you were trying to ach achieve. So all this, I've been working on it for a while, like on and off, reading Hacker News most of the time, so it's not working yet. Um, uh, unfortunately, but here's the code. If you want to look at, the, um, at, at this presentation again, I would recommend it, look at it again. Um, it's so nice. Uh, it's also in, uh, in this GitHub repo, repo. I called it new.js because new was, well, it's like the, the website that I read all day. Um, and also because it sounds like new and it wasn't taken. Uh, it's also a big concern always. Um, and um, uh, this afternoon I will try to do a, a bike shedding workshop. Um, so please come and like, tell me how I'm completely wrong or you know that the callback should have like the air last, for example, I don't know. <laughs> Would be nice, right? Or uh, other great ideas. I, and I will also answer any questions because I've really only scratched the surface. There's a lot more specification to it already and you want to know all about it. Um, and I don't know, there's no room for me booked, I suppose, but if you can't find me, I will probably be in a non-obvious location. I will tweet it um, so you can find me anyway. All right, thank you very much.